Phoenix Rising here, and today we're going to be doing part one, uh, the introduction, how to tear down and put back together, and doing bolt gap checks on the PTR-91 rifle, which is a G3 HK-91 clone. Uh, this is going to be a several part series. Today's the intro and tear down, principles of operation. Uh, we'll be doing a separate video on sighting in a sight mark wraith on this unit. And a third one following the whole break-in process, which is several hundred rounds, including some accuracy checks both before and after break-in. So stay tuned and enjoy. Hi, Phoenix Rising here. And you might be wondering why uh, we're shooting in black and white. Uh, if you look at the rifle on the table, that's this is a PTR-91. It's a G3 clone. Uh, Cold War era main battle rifle, so I thought it might be appropriate to start the video off in black and white considering uh, the picture in Berlin Wall and the height of the Cold War. This was uh, one of the three top battle rifles, or maybe not three top, but the three main battle rifles that uh, NATO forces used to defend freedom. Uh, uh, along with, of course, the Fowl and the M14 are the two other ones that really come to mind and stand out, that and the G3. So anyway, let's go ahead and switch to color, and then we'll go over uh, this rifle, what we're going to do with it, and uh, kind of outline the next couple videos that we're going to be playing with. Okay, we're back and in color. Yay. Uh, okay, PTR-91, uh, we'll talk about it a little bit. Uh, we're going to break this down into three videos. Uh, the first video is us going over the rifle and then breaking down the action inside of it and showing you that, showing you how to do the ever important, uh, checking the bolt gap, and, uh, and showing how the lockup works, how everything works on this thing, because this is a roller lock delayed blowback action, which is very unique in the, uh, in the automatic rifle world. You don't see too many rifles using this design, mostly HKs and Setmes. I don't know if there's even any others that do, but it's a unique design, and one of the things that is unique about it that I really like is that when you fire a round out of this thing, the bullet is all the way exited the muzzle before anything starts to move in here, okay? Uh, not like a, an actual regular blowback. Uh, even your gas-operated systems, uh, depending, may or may not actually have things starting to shift and move uh, before, you, uh, before the bullet's out the barrel. So, uh, and that's not the case for certain on these. So, uh, we'll go over all that. That's going to be this video. And then once we go to the range and start the break-in process, which is going to be two to three hundred rounds, okay, uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to mount this Sight Mark Wraith, brand new digital night, day night vision rifle scope. We're going to mount it, uh, get it zeroed in, which uh, and, and we'll probably do a, a video on that process, a zeroing process, saving profiles, uh, something I've not done before with this, although I have done a comparison uh, a, a sunset night comparison between this and its big brother, the Photon. So it'll be a good uh, good test of this. And once we get this on and sighted in, we're going to go ahead and take three boxes, specific boxes of ammunition. And the break-in is going to all be using Tull, the finest ammunition on the planet. Okay, hands down, swear by it. You know, uh, really, uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, 308 Winchester, 150 grain. Full metal jacket, tall ammo, cheapest, some of the dirtiest running ammunition that I've ever shot. But it'll be good for breaking this weapon in, and it's $10 a box compared to $17, $20 bucks a box for cheaper hunting ammunition. So uh, this is what we're going to use to break it in. We're going to sight that in with the, uh, with the Wraith, and that's going to be our kind of our baseline. And then what we're going to do is we'll take one box of this, a box of... Federal Power Shock 180 grain soft point hunting ammunition and a box of Winchester Super X 180 grain power point soft point ammunition and we're going to benchmark these three boxes see how they pattern at 100 yards what kind of group sizes we get early on in the break-in you know we're talking 30 rounds maybe having been shot through the gun and we're going to set these off to the side and continue to burn through another couple hundred rounds of tall ammunition following the break-in guidelines of PTR. Then when we're done, we're going to go, we're going to clean this rifle up, spick and span, 
scrub everything down, recheck our bolt gap to see how much it's changed from brand spanky new never fired to two, three hundred rounds break in. And then come back out to the range, take those same three boxes of shells and shoot them again and see, hey, uh, where did the, has the point of impact shifted any? How about group size? Has the group size kind of gotten shrunken down a little bit? And uh, we'll just see really, hey, is there, is there any change on the break-in process as well as how the rifle feels? Uh, is it smoother acting? Uh, everything else. And then, of course, as we're doing that, we're going to be taking some high definition video which this thing can shoot and uh, we'll also be giving a good recoil check on this because the Wraith is rated to 308 levels of recoil and once we get it on here we're going to have at least uh, 150 to 250 rounds through this weapon with this scope on it to see how well this thing holds up to uh, to what it's supposed to. So there you have it, uh, three, different, three different videos and that's what we're going to do. Uh, so now just a couple points on this, uh, like I talked about, uh, this, this, this has a, a lot more manufactured parts by PTR than earlier versions. Uh, so this started about 2012 or so, they started building most of their own stuff and uh, machined parts with your furniture and your magazines being uh, surplus type stuff. So PTR is bringing this back into being a manufactured weapon by one manufacturer versus cobbled together. Uh, so this should be pretty interesting and, and a, a step up above what a lot of people experienced with PTRs and SETMEs in the past. They did add a couple of features to this that you won't see on the original HK91s or some of the older variants. First they put back the paddle mag release, right, which uh, they removed on the HKs. When they brought them over it just has a button on the other side here. You've got the paddle mag release, that's added back, that's a good feature. The best feature of all though is this rail. Uh, PTR on some of their versions, though you can get it with or without. I would highly recommend with, you can get a Picatinny rail welded on top. As you can see there's four half inch welds on either side holding your rail on. It doesn't interfere with your uh, HK style uh, peep sights, which by the way are really great. I always like their sights. Uh, <clears throat> But this is, a, this is a big plus. You don't have to buy the Stenag claw mount, which an HK one would be two three hundred dollars And the aftermarket ones didn't work so well, and plus it weighed about a pound and a half just for the scope mount. So uh, this is a very, very welcome option to make this a usable rifle in uh, more modern times. So uh, that's about all, all to go over with that, aside from just our teardown. So PTR, Sightmark Wraith, lots of fun shooting it, and we'll continue on from here. Okay, we're back and as you can see we've got our PTR-91 a little bit uh, tore down already and basically uh, to tear it down you have your two pins that go through the stock uh, tap, pull them out uh, then you just give a good tug on the butt stock with the uh, rifle in a discharge position or bolt fully forward and that will separate your stock and your recoil spring assembly from the from the main receiver. So let's go ahead and we'll just uh, take a look at the receiver, uh, the stock, stock a little bit first and I'm going to go ahead and just roll this up. Uh, you can see we have a fairly long recoil spring in the operating or the recoil reta spring retaining rod is uh, mounted in the back of your steel plate. Uh, we do have a couple of a uh, couple of retaining screws down in there and I'm, I don't know if how well I'm going to be able to do all this. Okay, you can see I'm barely good down there. Uh, two retaining screws for your stock. Blah, blah, blah. And uh, if we look at the front end of this, you can see we have, uh, if you need to do, do need to disassemble this, get this in focus a little bit. Uh, where is it? You can see right here we have a pin we can knock out, pull the plug off the end of the rod, and that'll allow you to remove your recoil spring and all that, if you ever need to do that, which odds are that you probably won't. Now, uh, the rest of the takedown on this, again, it's, this is a real simple rifle to take apart. A uh, couple little tricks to get it back together once you do. Uh, here's your whole trigger group and if you'll look, try and brighten that up a little bit, you can see your trigger group. We have a notch up front that it fits in and holds on. Of course it slides over the receiver 
edges down on the bottom here. And in the back we have this cutout notch, which is where your stock pins go through with this uh, protrusion or plate that goes across the bottom. So really the whole back end, when you put this into place, just slide your stock over it. Your stock retains it in the back. It has uh, your little catch area and the front that retains it. Pulls out very, very easy, okay? Uh, there's your whole fire control group. Uh, to remove this, all you do is rotate up your safety select, safety fire select lever up to the, the full up position, which it can't get to when it's mounted on the rifle receiver gets in the way, so you can't, it's physically impossible for it to go there. Pull that straight out, and there's your trigger group, okay? Uh, you can see it's uh, got a good bit, of, a good bit of spring tension on it good bit of mass to the hammer. I mean, you're not going to have light off problems uh, unless your firing pin's damaged or something else, but you're not going to have ignition problems with this uh, with this uh, hammer spring assembly. Put it back together. You can see it fits in there. It's good and snug, but not uh, not grossly so. Put your safety fire select back in, flip it down, and you're back together. And uh, there you go. Fire control group. Now, uh, we're going to take a real good look. Let me see if I can focus this beam a little bit on here. We're going to take a real good look to, at the bolt, uh, bolt group, your bolt head and carrier. Uh, looking down in here, there's your there. The, you can see in the silver. There's your bolt head. There's your carrier. You can see a very very slight gap between the two. Now that's your bolt gap, and that's what we're going to have to measure. Uh, and we're going to do that later on. We're going to tear it apart and show you how this works before we actually do our initial measurements, okay? Uh, to unlock this thing, okay, let me see if I can get this in here, right? Okay, when we unlock this, we're going to lift your lever over here. We're going to, and when you do this, there's a lot of resistance. Like, why in the hell is this so hard? Well, the reason for that is when we lift this lever up, we're actually using a cam action in the back to shove this thing hard enough to get the unlock partially accomplished. So I'm going to see if I can hold this, let me get this into frame, where I'm going to go ahead, hold this to where the camera can see it, let me see if I can get some light on there, and I'm going to lift it up so you can see the separation. See how this is, I'm lifting up and this is hard to do, but see how I'm working the bolt? Okay, there we go. So I've just done the first step, now my front handle free floating and I have somewhat of a bolt gap here okay I give it a quick tug and that gets it the rest of the way and from there we simply slide our bolt out our bolt carrier group see we have a good bit of mass to this uh, which helps to dampen the recoil on this rifle but you can see right now we've got about a quarter of an inch gap here on our bolt and try, I'm trying to keep this in frame in the, so that it focuses right. And that's a full unlock position. You can see our rollers are free floating on either side. And this is the, there you go, there's the unlock. Now, what makes this so hard to pull back and forth is this, this uh, operating lever, for lack of a better word, uh, here. And uh, again, I'm going to see if I can manage to get this to where you can see it good. Looking down in here, there's this lever on the top, and it's pushing down on this ridge on your bolt head. Now there's a groove just up forward of this, so when it locks home, this this spring force shoves down, pulls this in, locks it firmly. And of course, in the meantime, when it unlocks, you have a, a lip on the front of your carrier and a ridge on your bolt head with it in its normal position that prevents the bolt from coming off the end in the other direction so uh, that's your position there now no we're not going to we're not going to uh, lock this and show you this yet what we're going to do is we're going to line everything up just so you can kind of see how how this whole thing I guess maybe flipping it over might be better how this whole thing sits with your recoil rod and a recoil spring and everything else in position. So right about there is probably a, a, a locked position or where your bolt head is going to be. And this chair out of the way. Uh, and there's your, there's, there's with your stock on. So if I go in here and I'm, there's actually a shoulder inside this tube. So 
right right here I'm in, I'm engaged in the spring but no tension so if I push that right there you can see there's not a lot of tension on your recoil spring uh, maybe a quarter inch or something when this thing's in battery and everything's locked up so uh, but it does have a very long throw and it will utilize that because if you look the bolt has to come back far enough to strip another round off so yeah you're gonna has a real long long throw on this thing so okay so there's a, there's a bolt group kind of uninstalled just kind of given the lay of the land there let's go ahead I'm going to pause this and we're going to come back talk about the bolt lock up and then disassemble it and uh, and we're actually going to uh, cut again and then come back and do our actual bolt gap check so let's go ahead and do that now okay uh, here's my disclaimer and sorry I'm throwing this in here but I got to thinking about it and because we're taking apart reassembling a rifle and I'm going to be going over how to do some checks that are fairly critical felt it pertinent to do a disclaimer beforehand okay uh, too many people suing everybody for God knows what and everything under the sun so so here we go uh, my disclaimer is first I'm not a gunsmith I'm just somebody who likes to work with weapons been playing with them for a long time and thought I could share some information that others may find of benefit uh, as such, these are my opinions, and they're for education use only, okay? That's all they are. Take them for what they're worth. Uh, third, follow your manufacturer's instructions. This video is not a substitute for reading and understanding the instructions and uh, procedures for using the, the rifle that you have. And if you don't have those, reach out to the manufacturer, search online. In today's day and age, uh, no substitute and no excuse for not having a manual and reading it, okay? Uh, and if you get into anything that you're unsure about or something that looks questionable, feels questionable, uh, get with a professional gunsmith. There's no shame in that. And uh, with the mechanical forces and the pressures generated inside a modern sporting rifle, uh, it's really not worth taking a chance if you're, if you're not sure, okay? And then lastly, remember, as a, as a firearms owner, uh, you're responsible for both your own safety and that, uh, and the safety of those around you, okay? So if you take something apart, you put it back together, if you got to modify something or you omitted some critical step, when you go to the range and pull the trigger, it may not be you paying the price. It could be your buddy standing next to you, your wife, your kids, or an innocent bystander uh, that are around you that pay the price for screwing up. So uh, just due diligence. Remember you're responsible for your own safety and that of uh, those around you. And uh, do what you need to do to be safe. So uh, with that being said, let's go ahead and uh, get into tearing down this PTR and taking a look at the guts of it and how it works. Okay, we're back with our uh, high-tech graphics here from our graphics department. Uh, that's a joke, by the way. But anyway, uh, so here's, a, here's just a picture, a, a drawing of how this thing locks up. This is a crude approximation, uh, not a high-budget graphics production, as you can see. But this kind of shows the way things are. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to compare that with this bolt as you see it. Now, right now, of course, this is obviously in the unlocked position because we took it out of the rifle, right? So you can see we have about a quarter inch gap between our carrier and our bolt head and the part you're seeing in the middle here and maybe I can throw a little bit of light on here and the part you're seeing right here is your cross wedge okay that's this part here and it is tapered although it's a lot steeper taper than what I'm illustrating so this is unlocked your bolts are free to move free to get past the trunnion and go back right now when this thing goes into battery it's going to slide home Bolt head, bolt head's going to hit the hit, hit the face of the breech, and then momentum's going to drive the carrier. Momentum and spring force are going to drive the carrier into place. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and lock this thing, okay? And you're going to hear this. Now oh, that's a pretty solid, solid spring click, right? Uh, and that is that's the slug going down into the groove. Now I can't. It's physically impossible for me to pull this thing. And separate it right now uh, because this is just too much too much spring force so let's see if we can get up in here and show this a little closer now and uh, all right focus focus grab the flashlight here because uh, it's a little bit dark in the center there okay 
So now you can see that that lug engaged in the groove firmly, right? Our levers down in there, and uh, look at that spring. That is a, that's a heavy duty, very stiff spring that's causing this positive lockup. Okay, so right now rollers are locked, and uh, and if I, I I've done this before, so right now there is no bolt gap. Okay, this is fully. This is enough spring tension, it's fully retracted into where there absolutely is no gap. Uh, but you don't check this out with the rifle, you have to check it when it's engaged. So now let's go back to our drawing a little bit. Now we're in the locked up position, and if this were in the rifle, these bearings would be pushing out to, on, the, on, the, on these edges of the trunnion to lock the bolt in place, and, and how far these can protrude out is going to be based on having your uh, having your bolt head firmly against your breech, right? So that's why you're going to have a gap here now. Uh, if your gap is too small, then uh, you may or may not necessarily, uh, these may or may not be fully engaged into the locking lugs because of wear on the rollers or wear on your cross wedge or something, right? Uh, by the same token, if your gap is too great and there's and this thing's forced to be too far back out, I would tend to think that that would be maybe debris or something on the face of your breech or in your trunnion that this thing's trying to drive home, but it can't drive your bearings out all the way, right? In either case, if your bolt gap's either too large or too small, what you're looking at is if it's too small, you're looking at uh, something's not right, you don't have a positive lockup in the, in be probably more due to wear or a mechanical problem in here that's not uh, to where you're not able to drive these firmly out, okay? So, and, and, and these may be loose, you, so that could get, get to where you have too big of a headspace uh, or an insecure lockup, right? If it's too large, then that means there's probably something preventing either the bolt from going all the way in and down, debris there, or something preventing your rollers from coming out to where the bolt's trying to get in the battery and locked up, but it's not capable of doing that either. So in either case, uh, you don't have a positive lockup, and that's indicative that you're going to have a headspace problem, which can mean you could blow a case out or something like that because it's, you have too much case uh, that's not supported. And uh, so that's the importance. That's where your bolt gap is actually your head space measurement or you, the equivalent of it on this rifle because there's no way to get in here to look at this, uh, look at your actual head space when the breech is locked up. So if the gap's too small or too large, too large to me probably would be more of a debris problem either on your bolt face or in your trunnion that's preventing your rollers from going out. If it's too small, it's either trunnion wear, bearing wear, uh, cross wedge wear something to where you don't have enough you don't have enough wedge going in there to properly lock your bolt and properly drive your bolt home okay either either way a dangerous condition so there you have it that's kind of that's the example and I did, one thing I, I forgot to mention I think I mentioned it earlier is that when this when you shoot this thing and it's in a locked up position what happens is your mechanical force your recall blowback whatever uh, it can't get through this bolt, this bolt is hard locked. So what it does, that recoil transmits through the bolt into the carrier and there's probably just barely enough play or enough way for gas to get back here. I don't see any direct gas application, more recoil, uh, to where it's gonna jack the bolt back and, and have enough force to overcome this spring and lug locking to where bolt then jacks back. Now this, now you're, bearings are free to roll it and the whole action goes back. So it's, it imparts just enough delay uh, to where you don't have high pressure gases blowing back out of the rifle and the, and the bullets already exited the muzzle before any of this lockup really starts to move, which are all, all positive things, especially considering you're shooting, you know, 308, uh, 308 uh, high pressure, high powered rifle ammunition through this thing. So there you have it. There's, there's a roller lockup and now let's talk about your actual clearances and how you're going to do the check. Your clearances are 0.010 to 0.18 inches. Uh, that's the acceptable range on this gap when it's installed and locked properly. 
or 0.254 to 0.457 millimeters for you metric minded folks. Uh, when you're doing your checks, you got to make sure you got a clean rifle. You know, spick and span any debris that's anywhere in this mechanism might give you a false reading, and uh, that may be fine for operation, but in, impact the accuracy of your reading. And by the manual, it says you do the slap slap the uh, bolt home uh, five or six times, uh, dry fire it in between to to work everything in and make sure that you have this thing actually solidly in the battery, and you don't have uh, any kind of loot flukes, you don't want to lower it down or just gently put it in, you want it to slap home like it was actually working for a living. So uh, there you go. We'll, go, we'll come back and we'll actually do the bolt check measurement after we put the rifle back together. Okay, now that being said, now let's, uh, let me show you how to take apart this whole bolt assembly. Now, right now it's in battery, we can't really, you can't install it in a rifle like this because your lugs are here, it can't get past the trunnion. And you can't physically just grab onto this thing and pull it out. Uh, you might be able to in a vise and tear shit up doing it, but that's not the way you take this thing apart. So, uh, looking at it, this bolt is designed to where if we if we rotate it, the bolt, if looking at it at the uh, bolt face that contacts the breech, right? Rotate this bolt 90 degrees counterclockwise, and it's hard to turn. You might have to put a, a wrench on it. Uh, and once we get to that 90 degrees, it'll just kind of have to wiggle a little bit, but it'll come right off. We've got the lug that engages the carrier to prevent your bolt from the retaining lug here. We've got that moved out of the way, and you can see it's cut to come off. And uh, we've also rotated it out of our spring force uh, lug over here. So that's, that's easy enough. Rotate it 90 degrees counterclockwise. You can pull your bolt off. Let's see if we can actually uh, show you down in the bolt a little bit here. Uh, just to... Just for because inquiring minds want to know. Okay, come on, focus, focus. I don't know if you're gonna actually do that or not. Okay, there we go. So there you go. There's there's your firing pin channel. You can see our rollers. And uh, that's uh, one roller. If I can get this lit up. There you go. One roller all the way in, which would be with your. Uh, cross wedge retracted and the other one would be with your roller all the way cammed out and then into the position it would be locked up so uh, there you have it bolt and by the way like I had mentioned earlier if you look on this uh, you can see it real good here PTR so this bolt this bolt this bolt was manufactured by PTR it's not a surplus part that they cobble together and that's what I was talking about them actually turning more into a manufacturer than a, just a parts assembler uh, and I'm not sure, if, whoa, that's not good. Let me make sure I've got my uh, area covered here. Sorry. Camera legs, everything in the way here. Let me get this back. Okay, there we go. But, uh, okay, so let's get back to this tear down and whatnot. Okay, now this is your cross wedge, and as you can see, uh, as you can see, it's got a really steep taper to it and uh, at the top end it when it's up fully I would say when it's fully unlocked that's designed to allow those rollers to go all the way in and so it has a good bit of when it drives home with that steep of an angle you can bet that it's applying a good bit of lockup force on those rollers okay and uh, and this could wear out your rollers will wear out Trunnion over time, I'm sure would wear, and, and they actually make different size rollers that you can order, and that's how you adjust this head gap to get it into ranges. They've got oversized rollers or different sizes of rollers that are that you can order to actually change uh, change them out and uh, to to get your get your rifle back into spec if it wears out if you ever use it enough to wear it out to that level, okay? And that's a lot of wear, okay? It is a lot of wear, so. Uh, Here's your cross wedge, and this is in the position that we had it to, for just being unlocked. And so what we're going to do is you can rotate, rotate it 180 degrees. From okay, we started off right. Normal position is flat with the bottom of the receiver. We did a 90 degree rotation to get our bolt off, and then what we'll do from there is you can rotate it 180 degrees either way. I'm going to go counterclockwise. And what that does is that allows your cross wedge to unlock and come out of your carrier. I'll turn this sideways so we can see it a little better. As I pull it out, you'll notice it has one locking lug that has to go in a keyway 
right underneath your actuating rod area of your bolt. So go ahead and pull your cross wedge out. There you can clean the firing pin channel, uh, clean your cross wedge, pull out your firing pin and your firing pin rebound spring, which is actually pretty darn stiff too. And also clean out the whole, whole channel and works for all of that. Uh, now let's take another look at this cam lever and uh, just for uh, just for illustration so you can really see how uh, how uh, how this thing goes together see and it has a good bit of over travel available in it which we'll find out when we put it back together it can make your life a little difficult on reassembly so it's fully levered in as far as it can go and again let's take another look at that spring and you can tell that's that's a boy that's a heavy spring it's got a lot of force behind it but that's what's that's what's locking locking your bolt head up against the uh, carrier when you're in battery so uh, there you have it there's a bolt carrier group and kind of shine the light down here you can see the uh, see where it's got part ways down your uh, shelf that your recoil spring rests on so now let's do the uh, part that can be a little bit tedious and frustrating initially so you get used to it and, and that's the reassembly portion of this so okay got our firing pin and our spring in we'll take our cross wedge again notch to the top put it in lock it and spin it 180 degrees now if you'll notice looking at this bolt it's got this nice tapered area that's to assist us in getting that lug up onto the bolt uh, as a part of reassembly and uh, that's probably the most difficult part of doing anything with this so we'll start with that bolt in the same position we had it uh, which it would be rotated 90 degrees counterclockwise from uh, from the bottom of the bolt being aligned with the bottom of the carrier now as you can see and I'm gonna before we start this we'll go ahead and do another another close-up here you can see where our locking lug is and you can see where that cutout is and it's not uh, it's got a little bit of travel. You've got to overcome that to get it started, and that's that's where that's where it's a little bit brutal putting this back together. Uh, and this be and again because this is new and this is not worn in at all. This is a little bit tighter than a lot of times. So I'm going to go ahead and just give it a few quick taps on the on the front face here a little bit. And I know I probably should I should be using plastic uh, hammer. I got one on order, but it's not here yet. Uh, and I got a big rubber mallet that's not suited for this job. So as you can see, I just took the gap down a little bit, just enough to get this engaged. And we'll go back to a close up. Okay, see that I've got it up, up and over the hump there a little bit. And I've still got a fair gap. And I've got it enough to where my retaining shoulder on the bolt is able to go behind the, the uh, mating surface on the carrier. And now all we have to do is just go back uh, 90 degrees clockwise with this. And it's tight because this thing's still pushing down on it, your uh, lug there. And oh, man, I actually did that by hand. I'm impressed. Uh, I've taken this part a few times and so far I've had to use a crescent wrench adjusted to the width of this to kind of get enough leverage to finally get this to lock up. And uh, so I guess my disassembling and reassembling and working this stuff is giving it a little bit of wear to where it's you should be able to do it by hand but it takes a good bit of force a brand new rifle you might need to uh see i even had my crescent hammer at standby here to where i could just kind of give this an extra nudge to get this thing into its normal unlocked position and of course if i push this and it locks up again i got to take it back apart and go through this process again to get it back to where i can just reassemble the rifle so uh, there you have it there's our Disassembly, reassembly of the bolt, showing you the bolt gap, how the system works. <clears throat> now let's just go ahead, reassemble, and uh, and do our bolt gap check, and that'll be the com that'll complete this video. So, again, as I go in here, uh, that's how much you have. Basically, when the bolts close, you see how much bolt gap we have right now unlocked. When the bolts close, the front end of your carrier is just beyond the opening for your uh, ejection port so we'll go ahead and I'm just gonna that's all it really takes now it's locked in and you can tell 
don't have any place for debris to get in, but it's not, that carrier is not far ahead of this lip, okay? So we've got that in place. Now, we'll go ahead and I guess it would help to get our trigger group back in here. And we'll just show the whole process. Okay, trigger group sat down in there. Good little tap on that, little love tap. Socks lined up. Give a good heel tap there. Oh, that, by the way, that little bit of play is what you're seeing is, is the only amount of tension on the uh, bolt. Okay, and there we have it. So now we have the rifle back reassembled. Now let's do our, remember, slap home and dry fire five or six times. So let's go ahead and do that. Out there, and like I said, this gets this will get easier as this rifle works in. And one more. Okay, so right now, if this thing ain't in battery, it never will be. Okay, sorry for the second disclaimer, but I wanted to throw this in here for those that just jumped ahead for the bolt gap check. So now, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and flip the rifle up. And we're going to check our bolt gap. Now keep in mind, this is a never having been fired rifle. Okay. Hmm. Well, the lights are kind of dim here on this flash or headlamp. I'm trying to light things up for you a little bit. Okay. And let's then we'll go ahead and we'll start off with the small side. And that's all you need to check this really is a set of feeler gauges. So here's our point zero one zero feeler gauge. Get everything else out of the way and we'll slide this down in here and go ahead and light this light up this up real good so you can see and you can see right now I've got a ton of play uh, let's see if you can get it in there to show you good so yeah I mean a lot of wobble way too much play so we're we know we have greater than 0.010 so let's go ahead and you know we'll, we'll do the dramatic effect thing here and where are we at we'll go for a 0 0.015 which is about about midways through the range and oh yeah that's going down to the wedge with no resistance whatsoever still so let's see uh, there's a uh, We'll try, we'll try the actual max limit, which is 0 0.018, and see how that goes. And, okay, I'm not able... I can, I, I can slip it in there, but it requires a good bit of force to do so. So, let's go with a 0 0.017, and see just where that puts us. And if I got it lined up right, um, maybe a little snug, but see, depending, I, that's not snug. Okay, if I get it just right, it's got just about the right resistance. So I'm going to call that 0 0.017, okay? So we've got a 0 0.017 bolt gap, which again is within our range of 0 0.010 to 0 0.018, okay? And... Uh, What's interesting on this is, okay, I've not fired this weapon yet, but I have had it apart several times, and I'm not going to lie, I've redone this video half a dozen times trying to get it right because I'm either out of frame or shit ain't focused or whatever, right? Uh, and then, of course, with doing all this and racking the slide and disassembling and reassembling everything, I originally started off, and when I did this bolt check, I had .018. And then that dropped down to 0 0.0175 or where 1.8 was a little tight and 1.7 wasn't. And now I'm down to 0 0.017. So just by me messing with this thing enough, I've actually got things settled in a little bit. So uh, so it is uh, is getting a little more towards the center range. So anyway, uh, like I said, first measured 0 0.018. We're down to 0 0.017 right now. 
we're going to go ahead and go to the range in the next video, do our whole break-in and do the break-in tests and all that, and then we'll come back and we'll clean this thing. And in, our, in the last video, we'll go ahead and talk about where we're at, where we end up at on this bolt gap. So uh, stay tuned. More videos coming up. PTR ninety one. This video took a lot of time and effort to produce, so if you found value in it, please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. This video is free to download for personal use and may be used for educational purposes, provided credits given to Phoenix Rising and this channel on YouTube, and use of this video for commercial purposes is expressly forbidden without written consent. I hope you enjoyed it. Please uh, stay tuned to the channel and we'll have more stuff coming up for you. And thanks for watching.